are uh, preparing the global soil organic carbon map, there are some maps already available. However, the novelty with this map is that it's produced by every country. So we basically bring together uh, the national soil organic carbon maps developed by every country and we put them together. What kind of data will it contain? I mean, because we have lots of different types of soil, mm -hmm. uh, lots of, uh, you know, every region has its own soil. Um, I mean, how are you coordinating all this data? I mean, is it, are you getting it done little by little or how, how is that happening? We, we invited all, our, all countries to join this initiative so that they can prepare this information. Mm -hmm. We got mm -hmm. a very good and positive response because around nine, more than 100 countries have responded positively, but many of them have requested some support because they would like to use the new technologies available to produce better information. But something very important, soil carbon, soil organic carbon varies according to the different regions and landscapes. So there are very rich carbon soils that are located in what we call some temperate zones, for instance, you have, uh, they call it Chernozems, okay, it's a name, very scientific, but other people call it black soils. They are very, very rich, meaning that they have a lot of carbon, but there are other soils in very arid zones which have almost no carbon at all, mm. and that's why that's a combination of the humidity and the availability of organic matter, mm. meaning vegetation. So, we, in this map, of course, you will notice this huge variability between areas having a lot and areas having almost nothing, or some areas or regions having intermediate values. Mm. But that's, a, a, that's an example of a mirror of the soil health. Um, Today, uh, the uh, plenary session, uh, the plenary assembly, the fifth plenary assembly of the Global Soil Partnership, um, finished off with a quote uh, saying, uh, if we take care of our soils, we will take care of ourselves. Um, now, can we uh, make a link between uh, societal issues and uh, and the health of soils of any given region. Mm -hmm. And if we can do so, um, will this map be able to uh, help uh, alleviate uh, any kind of societal tensions you would find uh, that would be uh, linked, uh, you know, across various different sectors um, uh, linked, to, uh, linked to soil? Yes. Well, it is clear and there is a clear correlation between poverty and the status of natural resources, including soil. So if you go to a very poor region, you will see that most of the natural resources, but mainly soils, is very degraded. And that becomes a, a sort of the poverty spiral because as poor you get, as, you have, as less means you have in order to manage your soils and natural resources. So the only thing you are trying to do is to extract as much as possible. Mm. Therefore, there is a huge correlation between poverty and soil degradation. Mm. The poorer you are, the, poorer you, the more degraded your soil is, and that's proven already. Mm. So with that principle in mind, the soil organic carbon map, the, what can be done, it can show you where of course, you have healthy soils, where you have soils with less potential, and that will especially serve you as an indicator to monitor where there could be increases, where could be decreases, where can you invest on better practices to in, um, increase the amount of carbon. Of course, the next step will be on trying to understand what is the potential of carbon sequestration, so which soils can get more carbon and which soils cannot because it's not that everything can work you know mm -hmm. the variability is natural and soils there are soils with potential and soils without that potential mm -hmm. so this map will serve us to understand the current situation and to plan how we can do the next step that is implementing actions on the ground land degradation is happening happening at a very rapid rate 
um, with, uh, we have problems with uh, desertification across Central Asia, uh, in the Saharan uh, areas, the deserts uh, are advancing, um, we are losing a lot of topsoil, uh, therefore we are losing a lot of uh, soil organic carbon as well. Will there be a, an element where we will be able to uh, key in real-time data? Perhaps something to think about in the future. You're yeah. probably not there yet, there yet but is well, it something that you're thinking about? Since, the, since remote sensing came out, the, it was really a, trying to aid or avoiding the costly field work that we have to do to collect soil samples because that's so far the only way to get soil information, real one, is to go and get samples and understand your soil and take it to a lab and understand what is the status of the different soil properties. Yeah. There has been attempts like having satellite images or still with Google Earth you have a lot of tools to try to see but what you see is the cover. Okay? and the soil is on the depth. Mm. To understand the soil, you have to see the depth. Therefore, you can get an, 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 an let's say, uh, an idea of how your soil could be using remote sensing, Google Earth, all those tools. But again, if you want to see how much carbon you have, what is the pH of your soil, etc., you have to dig and mm. that's still costly and of course you need to go to the field. But we hope that there are new developments, but still we didn't reach there yet. How many people will you need on the field to, to elaborate this uh, organic carbon map? Well, currently we are using all the existing data and information because what you know in many countries, the soil data is sparse in libraries from different projects or institutions and they don't have national soil information systems. So this is the first step we are, we are giving to try to collect first what is available. When, when we have already that picture, then you can plan where else you need to go and get samples because you have a hole or a gap. But that's what the step. So we are not going into the field yet. This will be the baseline and then we will plan other activities to get new data. How, um, how will this, how will this soil organic carbon map bring, bring together uh, farmers with policy makers and scientists? Mm -hmm. Well, in principle, this work is done by scientists, okay? Because they have the data, they understand it, and they are trying to do it. And it will be very much used by policy makers, decision makers, who will understand what is the situation of their soils and what can be done. So it is really focused and targeted to that. And the beneficiaries, of course, could be the farmers because then these policies could address those areas in which you need to try to put measures to conserve the current carbon stocks. And that, mean, that means that we need to avoid degradation. Okay, so in areas where you have quite good soil organic carbon content, at least, at least, we need to try to avoid degradation and the release of emission of those of that carbon. In the other side, those areas with with, with limited um, um, amount and quantities of carbon, what we need to do is to uh, put measures in order to increase the amount of carbon um, and that of course is not that easy we cannot do this from one day to another okay there are practices we need to prove them we need to test them and so but that's how this map could guide decision make it for of course the late benefit last beneficiaries who will be the farmers now in the future of course we would like to involve farmers in order to collect the data so that they know where what's the process in order to show how the soil health is important for us. Um, rewarding farmers for carbon farming, um, is this a possibility? As the Secretary of the Global Soil Partnership, mm -hmm. is, this, is this something possible? Well, something very important for farmers is that farmers look at productivity. Okay, they are, they want to protect their soils, they are very conscious, they know very well 
but their main uh, interest is to have to sustain their livelihoods and for that they need in income and the better income and the more income they get through the soils to producing food they will do it so for them the issue is productivity it is not that they want to increase carbon because they know they understand but their target is to increase productivity so if we want to go to them and talk about this importance of soil organic carbon we have to link it to food security food production income generation and so on. Otherwise, they will never even try to, to join you in any activity because they, it's clear, it's for everyone. No? They, they rely on productivity and that's the most important for him. So for them, a reward will be that you already give them some practices that will work, that will increase their productivity and that this productivity will be maintained in time know that it will increase one year and then decrease the next mm. okay so you they need confidence mm. if a farmer gets a practice that is con is having confidence and reliable and will secure the income in the law in the short and medium term they will get it without any need of rewarding because they will get the reward of producing more in the european union uh, there are subsidies that go to farmers um, mm. a lot of these subsidies are um, spent on uh, machinery and uh, heavy chemical use uh, that contribute to um, uh, depleting soils, to soil erosion. Mm -hmm. um, could we imagine some of those subsidies uh, to finance farmers so that they switch practices that are more uh, ecological, mm -hmm. uh, such as silver pasture, uh, agroforestry, that use uh, yes, le less or no chemicals or, mm -hmm. or no tillage. Uh, could we imagine um, uh, a coalition uh, coming together, uh, such as the Global Soil Partnership, to, 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 to look at that, that uh, reasoning? Well, in the Global Soil Partnership, what we promote is sustainable soil management. Okay? That's what we promote. We don't promote a particular practice or approach. We promote sustainable soil management. So any practice or activity that fit into that, we support. Now, I think that uh, the world, and especially in Europe, Farmers are already very aware about all this and there are huge movements and a lot, of, a lot of awareness raising on the importance to protect our resources, to protect our environment and of course to protect our health. So I think that this is growing quite rapidly and they are getting conscious and I think that uh, in the near future we will have more and more people that will be joining this sustainability, uh, let's say, consciousness. So. I believe that we have to continue investing on awareness raising on the need to manage our soil sustainably so that we can really think about the future generations. So I don't think we should uh, try to change things because sometimes when you are forbidden or you are giving a wrong message mm -hmm. then people don't join. But I we in the GSP yeah. invested a lot on awareness raising and that's really a very powerful tool. We, we have, we have uh, witnessed at Regeneration International, we've witnessed that um, when farmers do have to change, it generally is because Mother Nature has forced their hand uh, of course. Uh, to change. You know. Yeah, they give, they give them, well, there, is, there are indications. They are, farmers are very aware of all the situation, you know, but in many regions, they don't have any means to try to do anything. And as I told you, for them, the livelihood is important. So priority is livelihood. But if they don't have means, they cannot prioritize something else, like the management. So we need to try to develop consciousness so that we, even national governments, can invest on sustainable soil management practices. Absolutely. Um, one last question on the uh, global soil organic carbon map. Um, would it be one day uh, possible to, uh, well, hopefully quantify the amount of uh, greenhouse gas emissions that we have in the atmosphere and also quantify the uh, amount of space available in our soils to draw down the excess uh, emissions? Mm. Yeah, well, in terms of carbon emissions, uh, 
Definitely, we are trying, we, okay, we are doing this global source organic carbon map with the data that is available. But then the idea is also to see, as I told you, the potential for sequestration, okay? And that's the next step. So we will try to show you where there is room for more sequestration, hmm? but with scientific uh, reliability, of course, so that we can try to show, well, there is need for investment here because we can sequester some of the carbon that is there, mm. okay? But again, that will have multiple benefits, food security, ecosystem services, etc. So I think it's worth doing that, but that will be the next step. So we are looking at the current situation now, then we will see at the potential. And with that, we will, I think we can give an, uh, an idea of what can be done. Thank you very much, Ronald. Uh, we really look forward to uh, the developments uh, in the future. And um, I'd really like to thank you uh, as well on behalf of uh, Regeneration International for this initiative, this global solar organic carbon map. It's uh, extremely important for the um, future of, uh, of all of us. Thank, thank you. you very much thank for you. the opportunity. Thank you.